Hey folks, I'm Mark Ryan. This is Super Review, and this is the Moondrop Variations, which, yeah, I said this is, and then I said variations. So I'm mixing my singular and my plural. This name is a little confusing, but we'll make do. So what the Moondrop Variations is, is obviously the latest IEM from Moondrop. And if you will recall from about six months ago, I did my 2020 Yearphone Awards where I named my five favorite IEMs of 2020. And in that, three of the five, I believe, were Moondrop IEMs. So as you can see, I'm, I've got pretty good reason to be excited about a new IEM from Moondrop. The variations, what makes this one pretty unique is this is, as far as I know, Moondrop's first tribrid IM, which means it's got uh, it's got a dynamic driver for the base, it's got two balanced armatures for, I assume, the mid-range, and then it's also got two EST drivers, electret, electrostatic, however you want to be picky about it. Uh, but yeah, it's got three different types of drivers built into here, and if you recall even going back maybe not quite so far the dunu est 112 that i reviewed earlier this year also a tribrid and that is one of my favorite ims that i've got so i've got pretty good reason to have high expectations for the variations but at this point it's still in a box i haven't heard it and this is not going to be a review this is just kind of like a first look we'll unbox the variations we'll see what comes inside it and then if all works out well I'll throw it under my measurement rig and we'll see what the frequency response looks like and compare it to things like the Moondrop Blessing 2 and the Moondrop Blessing 2 Dusk because the shell of this, as we're gonna see, is actually pretty similar. I guess at this point I don't have much else to say, so let's just go to the table and unbox it. Oh yeah, I did wanna say this is a live stream like my, my other videos, so if you have questions about the variations or anything else, stick around, we will have a little conversation after the unboxing and the measurement, although it might be a little shorter than usual because it's kind of late here in California. All right, now to the table for the spin. Wait, let's give it a hero spin. They said it couldn't be spun, but it has been spun. It's a pretty big box, honestly. Uh, as you can see, it is cubish, very cubish. And we can do a quick tour of it to see if there's anything interesting on the outside. Uh, let's see, on the top, we've got the Moondrop logo here on the sides. There's nothing, nothing there. Uh, but here in the back, there is some some useful information and like typical Moondrop, you know, they produce their own frequency responses. They are very particular about the frequency responses that they're going for. Don't expect my graph to look just like this because I believe they use a different measurement rig than I do. I mean, I know that they don't use my exact rig, but I think they actually use a, a completely different type of coupler. That said, what can we find out about this thing? So frequency response claim of nine Hertz to 40,000 Hertz. Okay, that's bold. Um, oh, interesting. Effective frequency response versus frequency response. I don't think I've ever seen that before. And someone that's smarter and understands these IEC things better than I do could probably explain it. But I don't know. I, I don't put too much stock in that stat anyway. Sensitivity of 108 decibels VRMS, which, um, I, I'm, again, this is like, there are two different metrics uh, on the sensitivity uh, scale, and this is the one that I'm le least familiar with, so I'm not sure how sensitive that will be. The impedance of 15 ohms, which again, that doesn't mean too much without the context of the sensitivity, but if you're a smarter person than me, you can probably translate that before I can. Um, and then here's just that information about the transducers, the the, the the tribrid drivers with the five different drivers. You've got, again, the one dynamic driver, two balanced armatures, and two EST drivers. Uh, the base driver is a 10 millimeter LCP diaphragm dynamic driver. If that gets you excited, we're different people because I don't really know what to make of any of that. What I do want to know what I do know what I want to make of. Wait, that was I'm going to restart this video and just come back later. I'm just kidding. Let's just unbox it now. All right, let's see. Oh, my gosh. Can we unbox this now? in there pretty tight i might i don't want to break this box so shout out to shenzhen audio for sending this in for review um this is actually just a loaner unit so i will have to ostensibly send this to somebody else and i don't want to ruin the box for them so i'm being as careful as i can be this box wants to be ripped there we go success crisis averted uh, let's see what we get inside here it looks like we've got some unique 
opening mechanism. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, I think I've done that completely wrong. There we go. There's the Moondrop logo. And there's a good chance I just ruined everything. But let's see. And okay, interesting unbox. I feel like I screwed that up in some way. But we'll, 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 we'll call that one an L and we'll take that one for now. But it looks like we get a little carrying case over here. We get some sort of QC card, which we'll put over there and treasure for forever. Uh, we get a set of tips in a nice plastic container, kind of like the final E-type tips that I recently uh, featured on the Sony XM4 review. That's interesting. So these look, yeah, maybe the foam tips, we'll, we'll dive into that a little bit more in detail later. Uh, this box, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like this is partly a me fail, but partly a box fail, if I'm being perfectly honest. But maybe I'll watch someone else's unboxing and be like, oh no, they, they got it right. Lots of paperwork in here, including a card with the variations character on it. It looks like a postcard. You could send that to somebody, which is cool. And then we've got a QR code for all you QR code enthusiasts. There you go. I don't know what that goes to. Hopefully uh, it's something works safe. And otherwise, I don't know, there's a bunch of paperwork in there. I'm not gonna dive too much into that. We'll throw that to the side. And this is the part I definitely screwed up because there probably should be a set of IMs in there. They're floating around down here in the box instead. Pull those out and I'll double check in here to see if I'm missing anything else. And there is a little bit more here. But I think, I'm hopeful, that is the last of what's inside that box. Let me go ahead and throw something over here and actually refocus the camera because that was such a tall box that I had to focus it for higher up than typical. We'll put these earpieces to the side for a second. Uh, take a look at these accessories. It looks like it's the typical Moondrop filters and a set of tweezers for applying them. Um, this is interesting because the, uh, the Moondrop Blessing 2 originally did not come with filters on it. And then later versions, they started including filters already pre-applied to the IM. And it looks like, well, spoiler, but it looks like they're already pre-applied there as well. And that, from what I understand, these are completely acoustical, acoustically transparent, which is to say these filters don't change the sound. Um, I haven't done my own experimenting with it, but I suppose I take Moondrop's word for that. Uh, but there definitely are some filters like this that will have a, an impact on the frequency response. I'll put those to the side for now, put that to the side, take a look at the tips collection here. And I like these little carrying cases. Um, pretty simple, but I like these. So you get the typical Moondrop uh, silicone ear tips and then these foam tips too, which is, which is neat. I think I've seen the small version of these foam tips before, but I've never seen these other sizes. So I think uh, a nice, Decent, decent selection of ear tips here, but even more to the point, I actually really appreciate this carry case because when you got a lot of ear tips, uh, it's hard to keep them in the right, or keep them all together. Put that to the side, take a look at this, which is a very tall carry case, if I'm perfectly honest, uh, and a bit of an odd shape, but it's got a magnetic clasp on it. It's got a cable stuffed inside, and I suppose, yeah, I don't know. I think that's a little bit large for me. I don't think I would use that, but it is handsome. So I'll give them that. Put that to the side for now. And here we've got, okay. Uh, and I wasn't sure if this is what was going to be included with the variations, but it does look like it is. Um, Moondrop has their own cable with swappable terminations. This seems to be all the rage these days. Um, the, the, the Dunu ES, or the, yeah, just Dunu in general has kind of started the trend of packing in cables with these swappable terminations and Moondrop has their own version of it. If I'm perfectly honest, and I've used this cable on, uh, I believe the Moondrop Illumination, uh, although in a different color. If I'm perfectly honest, this is not my favorite cable, but it's not a bad cable. You can see here, it's a little bit, a little bit memory prone, a little bit stiff. Um, and then the, the termination swapping mechanism down here is not quite as elegant uh, definitely not as handsome as the, the similar mechanism on the Dunus, but it's functional and you do get 3.5 millimeter standard connector as well as options for swapping to 2.5 millimeter balanced or 4.4 millimeter balanced for the folks out there who are into balanced stuff. But I am very much a single ended pleb. Now let's give it the roadie wrap test to see how well it lies once it's been given some 
some care, uh, but I think this cable is probably going to need a little bit of wearing in. There you go. Well, it's a pretty handsome little cable, right? Not too shabby. Uh, but finally, that's going to let us take a look at the earpieces here of the variations. And I guess I'll zoom back in for that so we can take a look at these things up close. And I got to say, these earpieces, the, the shape of them in general, reminds me a lot of the Moondrop Blessing 2, right? This little panel here on the outside, very, very similar to the Blessing 2. Uh, but the, the overall design and aesthetic is quite a bit different. The... The earpieces appear to be made out of sort of like a, a smoked resin. It's got a nice heft to it. And I'll pull out the Blessing 2 in a bit to see if it actually feels any heavier. Maybe it's about the same. But something about this, this finish on it honestly feels like kind of like a beach glass or something like that. So I think this looks a little bit nicer than the Blessing 2. Um, it's not as transparent. You can't quite see inside of it and, and, and appreciate all those details. But uh, if you get the light going through it, just right you can see some stuff going in there but yeah generally i think this is actually pretty handsome again i think beach glass is a pretty a pretty apt description for that so now let me hook it up to the cable and as i'm doing that i will complain about how difficult it is to decipher the l and r indicators on moondrop cables and i believe this is the l piece i think i've got that right Here's the R piece. Oh, and actually, let's, um, real quickly before I, I put tips on this thing, I'll show you, this is that, uh, the nozzle with the filter pre-applied and it's just kind of like stuck on there. Might be hard to see on camera, uh, but yeah, that is just one of these stuck on filters that has been already pre-stuck on there for you. Um, if I'm perfectly honest, I might be tempted to take that off, but again, because this is a loaner unit, maybe I should hold it on that. Uh, the last thing I will do is throw on an ear tip and typically I will actually use the small ear tips with this, with like the blessing too. And I'll go ahead and throw in a small for the right ear piece, but on the left ear piece, I know that my coupler prefers a medium ear tip. So that's what I will do here since that is what I'm going to measure. Uh, and then I will go ahead and I guess throw this thing in my head and see how it fits. I'm assuming it fits the same as a blessing too, but I guess we'll find out in just a second as I unwind this cable, throw it in my dome, and hopefully don't drop it. Yeah, I would say fit is, feels it feels the same as a blessing too. I don't have it here, you know, obviously on at the same time, but uh, if the blessing two fit you well, I think the variations will fit you well. And if you had issues with the blessing two, I will warn you, you probably also have issues with the variations. It is a larger fitting IEM and the, the, it's kind of got two different points where it feels a little bit large in the air and, and whether or not it's a problem for you or not. I don't know. I haven't honestly heard a lot of people who said they couldn't wear the blessing to, but most people agree that it fits kind of large. Um, so the, the, there's kind of two areas. Let me actually start with the zoomed in camera. Um, area number one where the fit on these things could be an issue is just that the, the nozzle right here is a little bit on the thick side. So where this thing goes into the ear canal can create a bit of pressure. Uh, and then the other point is just that they're actually a little bit, you know, they're a little bit large just as ear pieces inside the conchable. And again, for me, they fit comfortably. Maybe it's just because I've been wearing Blessing 2 so much that I'm very accustomed to the fit. Uh, but yeah, I honestly have no issues with the fit. They just are a little bit on the large side and it's worth noting. So that's what comes inside the box of the variations. And obviously, you know, I can't tell you what these things sound like. Can't give you a review, but we can throw them onto my measurement rig. We can get a frequency response graph of it and see how it compares to the Moondrop Blessing 2 and the Dusk. Uh, and actually just for aesthetic sake, I'll pull those two in so you can take a look at them. I've got them over here and here. This is the, uh, I mean, they'll look exactly the same except for the fact that I've got an aftermarket cable on my Blessing 2. Uh, but yeah, these are, you know, the Blessing 2 and the variations side by side. You can see that, um, you can see the family resemblance in their build and the aesthetic. And, you know, I do like the transparent look of the Blessing 2. 
but there is something pretty classy looking about this polished design. Although I am seeing that, I don't know if it's like moisture or oils from my ear are showing up kind of oddly on that, or there's just kind of a little conspicuous, we'll say. Okay, let's pull in. This is my uh, measurement rig. I'll throw the other IMs to the side. Just before doing this video, I remeasured these IMs uh, just to make sure that what we're comparing with is the most comparable thing. And I actually have a confession to make. I realized that the measurements that I have on squig.ling for the Blessing 2, the Dusk, and the uh, Moondrop S8 were all done through not my coupler, but through Precog Vision's coupler. And Precog, I saw you in the, in the chat earlier. Um, I totally forgot that I had made those measurements on your coupler and not on my own. So I actually have to update them on squiggling to make sure that they are fully comparable. Um, but that was actually part of why uh, you know, I, I, I did the due diligence of re-measuring them just to make sure. And I noticed that my measurements of the dusk wasn't lining up with what I thought. It's like, what is going on? And then I saw that I had made a note to myself that I had made that measurement with Precox coupler. So yeah, we'll just go ahead and throw the variations into here, fit it like roughly so. And that seemed to work for the other two, the, the blessing. So I have a feeling that'll work out pretty well here. And then we will jump over here to Roo. So this is the tool that we use for making uh, squiggly lines. And you can see here are these aforementioned measurements for the dusk and the blessing too, which I made. And I will hide these um, and let's go ahead and take a measurement of the variations. That's what I want. Why is it over here in this screen? Come on, bro. Come on, Roo. That's what you want to see. Okay, and there is your squiggle for the moon drop variations. Looks like this peak right here, uh, and I talk about this, I try to talk about this every time. This peak right here is a resonance peak that you will get in basically any measurement with one of these rigs. Uh, and it's lined up roughly at 8K, maybe a little bit too deep. Let me just be really particular about this one, and I'm gonna try taking this measurement one more time. Because I can. And that does look like I lined that one up a little bit better. So let's go ahead and name this thing, the one drop variations. And that is your frequency response. So what I'm seeing here is honestly a pretty shockingly stark contrast between the sub bass and the lower mid range. Um, this rise right here, that is, that's gonna be a lot of sub bass. So, we pull in my measurement of the dusk. And let me go ahead and align these at, um, why are you over there? All my windows are showing up on the wrong screen. Uh, but let's go ahead and align these at roughly 500 Hertz, let's say. And you can see that based on this frequency response, so again, orange line is the variations right? And the red line is the dusk. Um, and the dusk was known for having a pretty significant bass rise in it. It looks like the variations has actually got more sub bass emphasis than, than, than even the dusk. And if I pull in the original Blessing 2 measurement as uh, another comparison, you can see that the sub bass is actually quite a bit below the other two IEMs here. Um, and it's a little bit more of a, quite a bit more of a, a linear rise from the lower mid range, which, you know, I found the comparison between the Blessing 2 and the Dusk is that the Blessing 2 feels a little bit fuller in the mid range, um, slightly warmer, although I wouldn't necessarily call it a warm tune. Um, and just obviously a, a, a less significant bass emphasis. So, but yeah, that is, that is the measurement of this IEM. Let me go ahead and export this and upload it to squig.link in real time. So if you can, if you want to, you can check it out for yourself. Let's see. Yeah, 
That should be good. Let me double check everything before I hit publish. All right, we're looking good. So I'm about to, I'm gonna step up, step aside and upload this real quickly. All right, we should be good. And so now if you head over to squig.link, and in fact, let me let me do that real quick myself. Let me pull up Safari. Go to squig.link. Doing this in real time, people. I've got my hands crossed up. Okay. We're almost there. So yeah, let's jump back over here to squig.link. And we've got that frequency response here of the Moondrop Variations now laid on top of what I call my my target response, and yeah, this this basically just shows that the um, the upper mid range and we call this the pin again, basically in line with what I like to see. I would say that here in the lower mid range, and, and we can highlight that. And, and in fact, that even into the mid base, um, you get that little bit of a scoop there, which is going to have I expect the the effect of making the variations a little bit thin in the mid range. Um, and in that mid base, but then obviously that very large sub base bump. Um, again, this mid treble spike that we see here, and I have this explained in the, this little tutorial bit underneath the graph, um, that's a pretty typical spike that you'll see from uh, the resonance. Resonance peak is what we call that thing. Uh, and then I'll pull up the Moondrop Blessing 2 on top of that for a comparison. So you can see very similar uh, above 1K, Although down here, south of, let's say 300 Hertz is where they're pretty different. And I'm pretty interested to see what does that mean for the listening experience? So again, this is not a review. I can't tell you if I like the sound of the variations or not. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spend a good week or so listening to the variations and comparing it to the other moon drops that I love, as well as um, I'm hoping to get back my, my Dunu EST-112. I sent it out to a friend on loan um, and, and he's just a terrible person and he hasn't sent it back to me yet. Uh, I'm just giving you a hard time, Sean, but, uh, yeah, hoping to get that back. Cause I think that will be a really interesting comparison to make. And then I'll come back and I will give you my full review, full thoughts on the Moondrop variations until then. If you like this video, if you found it helpful, please hit the like button down below. It does help me out. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Ding that YouTube bell so that YouTube lets you know next time I'm live. And uh, I guess I'll catch you on the next Super Review. And if you're here live, let's hang around for a little bit and have a bit of a chat. All right, how we doing, folks? Let me catch up with live chat as best as possible. Um... I did see an interesting reference to the air frequencies here on the variation. So if I punch back over here, um, again, this uh, this blessing two measurement that I have here is, I need to update it with um, one that I'd actually taken on the same coupler because this was technically taken on a different coupler. So my measurement might look a little bit different afterward, but, um, you know, there's the obvious differences that I was talking about in the lower mid range and the mid base. But uh, what I didn't mention, and I saw someone in, in the chat mention, is the very big difference in the air frequencies up here. And that is, you know, ostensibly where an ESTAT or an EST driver is, is supposed to be good for is in that upper treble extension. But, you know, if you've seen a lot of um, 
EST driver IAMs that come out. I I don't build these things, but just kind of anecdotally and from, from what I hear, it sounds like it's actually, they require a lot of power in order to uh, deliver that treble extension that they promise. And it does look like that Moondrop has done it pretty well here if, uh, if this comparison uh, is, is, is a good indicator. So you can see I have the air frequencies highlighted over here on the right and the red line being the variations. You can see how it follows my target curve very, very closely. It stays relatively flat and doesn't fall off a cliff. Like most IMs will tend to have this dip at around 10K. So that's pretty interesting. Let me um, scroll back up to live chat though and, and catch up as best as possible. What's up, Rafi? Cam G, how's it going? Precog, saw you there early, appreciate that. Ghostbusters, Don Trumpion, what's up, y'alls? Scott Pledger, nice to see you as well. It's it's a little late, it's, it's late for me here in California. It must be even later for you. I think you're in like the middle of the country. DNTR saying that's quite the name, LOL. Yeah, Variations is an interesting name for them to have chosen for this I am. I mean, I, does Blessing 2 make any more sense or any less sense? No, not necessarily, but variations being a, a plural of a singular item, um, it's it's a bit 4D chess for me. I don't have anything against it. It's just, it's too smart for me. Oh, Cam G, you're up late. It's midnight in Atlanta. Well, thanks for hanging around. Hopefully you got what you wanted. Transient Snail, what's up? Soropashi, good morning. Yeah, it's good morning. Um, I, I, yeah, I saw that, you know, normally I do these things around like four or five my time. Um, doing it now, like in, you know, it looked like in around in India, it was around 9 a.m. So uh, hopefully reaching a different crowd today. What's up, Jason? Brady Vane, what's up? Not Daijobu, how you doing? Wiktor from Tokyo, cool. Glad you can make it. Cheeb saying lovely box. Well, I apologize for making a bit of a, a, a mess of that box. I unboxed it pretty bad. And I gotta put it back together to send to somebody else. My Life Matter saying, I thought it's the same configuration as the Dunu EST-112. The one difference is that the Variations has one more balanced armature. So the EST-112, 112, it's one dynamic driver, one balanced armature, two ESTs. Where if, if the, the Variations was following that naming scheme, it would be the 122, which isn't as easy to make cute puns about. Scott Peterson in LA, how's it going? fellow Californian. What's up, Grant? Nice to see you there as well. Oh, and Scott, you're listening to the stream on your Moondrop Starfield. So it sounds like you might be a, a Moondrop stand like me. Precog saying, yes, please don't ruin the box. I think I avoided ruining the box. I just unboxed it really badly. Mm, and My Life Matter pointing out that the spin might have been the cause of the box confusion and shaking. I, there's a very good chance, but also it it just traveled from, from China uh, to the U.S. in like two days, so it's been booking it. That could have also had something to do with it. Not Daijobu saying, honestly, I like the Blessing 2 colors more. And let me go ahead and pull the dusk in uh, into frame so we can take a look at how these things are next to each other. Um, the cable, just to clarify too, the cables on these are actually different. This is the Blessing 2 cable, the same that comes in the dusk, same that comes in the Moondrop S8. It's a little bit on the thin and wiry side. I don't mind it. I know some people complain about it, but you know, it's not the nicest cable. And as you've seen, I actually swapped out the cable on my Blessing 2 just because I like, I like that cable better, uh, but the cable that comes here on the variations is a little bit thicker, as you can see, apart from just having the difference in that termination. 
Umar asking, how much does it cost? And if I forgot to mention the cost, I apologize. The variations is $520. Uh, the Blessing 2 is $320, so this is a pretty significant step up, but it is coming in at less than the Moondrop S8, which is like $700, so somewhere in between there. Rafi saying the case look narrow. Sai says that that case looks nice. Oh no, the cable looks nice. I'm actually kind of curious, since I've got these things unboxed, can, how, does this, how does this case work? I've got these things roadie wrapped quite nicely. Uh, how does it look inside the case? And yeah, I guess that works out pretty well. It's pretty nice. It just, it does feel like it's maybe half an inch taller than it needs to be. But it does make it easy to get it in and out. So there you go. Well, and here in, you're saying you have this cable and it's not bad, but it's not exceptional. Yeah, I think that's fair. It's a decent cable. Uh, Sai asking, do the variations come in different colors? I don't believe so. You would almost expect it, given the name, that you would have variations of colors or something like that. But no, I don't think there's any color options on the variations, at least not yet. Um, and I, I don't think I would expect it. Transient Snail saying, I prefer this to the Blessing 2. To me, the print on the resin on the B2 around the BA looks a bit cheap. Interesting. I don't know if that's a thing I ever noticed. Josh Sabo with the the, the, the the very distressed face about me saying beach glass. Is that bad? I kind of like the beach glass look, honestly. And Rob Hawk, no, I have not yet heard the variations. Just unboxed it, just measured it. In fact, I'm just going to shut this live stream off right now so I can go listen to it. Or we'll hang out for a little bit longer. Uh, Sai so saying that the variations look like they fit better than the Blessing 2. Just to verify, since I've got the time now, let me go ahead and try fitting both of these IMs uh, in my dome. And I'll see if there's any obvious differences. It, 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 it felt to me, honestly, a lot just like a Blessing 2. Now, the one difference here is that I do have different set of tips on my Blessing 2. Um, here, I'm just sticking with the stock variation tips. Gotta say it feels like a blessing too, but let me go ahead and swap over to uh, an actual blessing too and confirm that. And just for the sake of it, I will actually swap the tip on here to make sure that we're doing tip for tip. There you go, there's the blessing to my head. Yeah, if it, it feels, it fits the same. In fact, if we want to, we can zoom in on these earpieces. And I've just got a rat's nest of cables going on here. Uh, but we can take a look at the earpieces side by side so you can take a, you can kind of see for yourself that they're basically the exact same shape. I don't see any obvious differences. Uh, Umar asking, what's the gold cable? And I saw some folks jumping in to answer. Uh, yeah, it's a Zen, Zen HS cable, I think is the brand name there on 
AliExpress. Uh, I should find a link to it and add it in the description or something. But um, if you want to, if you want a link for sure, like join the Discord server and I can I can send you a link. Uh, but yeah, it's a it's a really nice thick cable. Um, you know, it's not the best behaved because it is pretty thick. Uh, there's a little bit of a behavior trade off there, but I like it enough that it, 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 it doesn't bother me. Um, and the cable, I think I paid around 50 or 60 bucks for it. So not super cheap, but also not ridiculously expensive. And Sai, I saw you were also asking about the question. I hope that that was that was the answer. The cable that I use in my blessing too is that Zen HS cable. The Nobi asking, what do I think about swappable input cable? So I assume you're talking about um, these little swappable terminals right here. I think it's I think it's pretty nice that manufacturers start to include these because uh, it saves a lot of people having to go out and buy different cables just to utilize the balanced outports on their on their their devices. And I like, I definitely like this solution better than including only a balanced cable because I myself am a lowly single ended boy. I don't actually care about balanced. So I, I prefer to leave everything 3.5 millimeter just to maximize my, my intercompatibility. And, you know, I don't, I don't want to enforce that preference on everybody else. So I, I think it's nice that we have the option, but if everything was ever was only ever 3.5 millimeter, I also would not complain about that. Benjamin Zuniga saying no peak at 8K Hertz. Just to reiterate, that peak at 8K Hertz is on basically every frequency response. So I'm just going to go through, look, the Moondrop Aria, there's a peak at 8K Hertz, and I'll just highlight that section, right? Moondrop Blessing 2, peak at 8K Hertz. Dusk, peak. Crescent, peak. Illumination, peak, Connus Pro, peak, S8, peak. They all have this peak, and it's not because all of these IMs have peaky treble at 8K hertz. It's because it's a, it's an artifact of um, how deep the, the, the IM is inserted into this microphone. There's sort of a, a resonance effect that happens. And uh, for consistency sake, so that the frequency responses are, are maximally comparable, um, I and you know, a lot of other graphers try to consistently put that peak at 8K. So uh, as best as possible, pretend that 8K peak doesn't exist there. Sometimes sometimes it's a real peak, but based on the, the measurements that we're seeing here, it, it looks to me like the typical uh, resonance peak on the variations. Ghostbusters 666 saying, damn, that's some gigabase. And yes, I think uh, just based on the frequency response, the variations definitely qualifies as gigabase. But again, it's very focused into the sub base. So I don't think you're gonna have any issues of that gigabase causing like a muddy sound in the mid range. Uh, yeah, the dusk didn't do that either. And, and the dusk had, so I would call the, the dusk gigabase light. Um, this looks like it could be just full on gigabase. Big Boss saying, a wise man once said, anything above 200 hertz is irrelevant, which I could see why some people go that way. I, um, yeah, base is a drug and some people are addicted and that's fine. Not judging you, but, uh, I'm not. Uh, 
I think people in general look pretty, pretty happy about the, the frequency response here, which is not too surprising. It's Moondrop. They know what they're doing when it comes to tuning an IEM. Cheebs, I see you were the one that said that's a lot of air though. Do you say that in a though, like uh, you're worried about it sense or, or, or that's a good amount of air? To me, it looks pretty good on a graph. Um, I like, and as based on, you know, my, my target curve, I like an IEM where the air frequencies can stay uh, relatively flat in this region. Not a lot of IEMs can do that, honestly. So I'm pretty excited about that. Scott Pledger, you're watching in bed, trying not to fall asleep. Whew. Good luck. The, uh, the thing that puts me to sleep the most when I'm in bed, for some reason, is watching uh, fighting game tournaments. I love watching fighting game tournaments, Street Fighter V, Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Uh, but for some reason, if I'm in bed watching them, there's, I think there's like some sort of hypnotic effect that, that happens, and it really knocks me out. But maybe is now now is a good time for me to get into ASMR. Rafi asking, is the pattern on the faceplate engraved or just painted? My guess is that it's the same the same mechanism that they use to you know do the printing here on the Blessing 2, which is not like textured to the touch. You can't feel it, but they describe it as uh, an engraving. So I, I don't know much about it. I think touch here in the variations. Yeah, it's the same thing where I can't feel it. Like it's not textured, um, but I'm guessing it's the same, the same mechanism, same uh, manufacturing process. Julian Huang asking Moondrop S8 versus Blessing 2 Dusk versus variations. I haven't heard the variations yet. This is just an unboxing. We measured the frequency response, and I'll say based on purely the frequency response, the air frequencies look pretty appealing on the variations, but I think the Blessing 2 still probably hits my target closer because my target's based on a Blessing 2. Spoiler. Um, but yeah, I, I honestly don't know. I haven't heard the, the variations yet, so I can't answer that question. Tata saying, hi, as from Qatar. How is the sensitivity relatively? So the sensitivity, again, the, I think the rating was 118 decibels uh, VRMS. Um, if I go back to, I think it seemed, it seemed based on the measurement, I had to knock up the... I had to move up the, the the measurement of the dusk in order to align with the measurement of the variations. So I'm guessing it's a little bit more sensitive than the dusk, uh, but not significantly. <laughs> Juan, my face when Blessing 2 has more variations than the variations. And technically, that is true. Not only is there the Blessing 2 and the Blessing 2 Dusk variations, there's also the, there's there's multiple colors of the Blessing 2. It comes in blue and red wood. If you want it, it comes with, uh, it comes with different engravings of different anime characters. Whereas the variations has only just one variation, which is, we should talk to Moondrop about that. And Juan, you're saying WTF is beach glass? Are you, is that is that not a thing? Um, beach glass is just glass that you know gets washed up on beaches, and because it's being tossed around by the water, it gets this smoothed kind of frosted look to it. And yeah, that's cool. There's actually a beach in Northern California, and I want to say like Fort Bragg area, that uh, it's basically just covered in beach glass. Or at least it was at one point. People might have collected it all at this point. 
Uh, Chang asking, do the variations feel heavy? So I should mention I wanted to do that. Let me do sort of a side-by-side -side comparison with them. I think they feel the same weight as the Blessing. Oh no, you know what? Honestly, it does. Hmm. I should have a scale here to make this official, but I do want to say that the variations feels a little bit heavier. Or maybe they feel the same. I don't know. Interesting. I would definitely need a scale to be confident about that. But I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the variations is a smidge heavier. I could be wrong though. Juan, I'm not gonna embrace 4.4 millimeter. I mean, the 4.4 millimeter connector, this thing's pretty cool looking, don't get me wrong. Uh, but it just means I can't connect the IM that I'm listening to to my laptop if I need to watch a YouTube video or something like that, so. Yeah. Ali Haji saying, hey there, enjoying your JH Audio Jolene's, but cost me a big amount of money and I felt the cable must be uh, more high quality with that kind of price. Um, yeah, glad you could join it, uh, join the live stream. And I, I mean, I have not spent any time with any JH uh, Audio IMs, but the Moondrop S8 that I bought, I bought it used. Uh, the previous owner actually included a JH Audio cable which is interesting, and I, I don't, actually, don't actually like that cable that much. It's not bad, but I didn't think it was better than the, the stock Moondrop cable. But it is always disappointing when you, when you get a, an expensive item and the cable is not that great, and it's surprisingly true of a lot of kind of expensive IMs. I know Fit Ear, uh, a brand out of Japan, they make really nice IMs that cost, you know, north of $1,000. And they have among, they have probably the worst cable of any IEM cable I've ever tried. Uh, 64 audio, you know, they make a lot of IEMs that cost anywhere from $2,000 to over $3,000. Their stock cable, kind of butt. Um, so yeah, that's, I, I'm not sure what that's about. You know, people will complain about this stock cable here on the Blessing 2. This is so much better than the stock cable on any of the 64 audio stuff or uh, on the the fit ear stuff and yeah honestly like this is a fine cable that's that's kind of where i land but you know people have their preferences james crew saying i just joined what did you miss how is it so this is not a review just a first look unboxing but uh, for the interested, this is the frequency response of the moon drop variations and how it compares to my target response. So there you go. Looks pretty good. Kind of getting anxious to listen to it. David Sanchez asking, will I be playing Guilty Gear Strive? I'm pretty interested too, to be perfectly honest. I... I got really into Dragon Ball Fighters for the past couple of years, and okay, the past year I haven't actually played it that much, um, but once Dragon Ball Fighters came out, I got really into it. And um, yeah, I like Arc Systems games, and so the the new Guilty Gear, I'm pretty interested in. I just got to, I gotta find someone that wants to play with me, and that will put me over the edge to actually, you know, spend the money and buy it. Jason asking which tips are my favorite to use on uh, Moondrop IM. So what I've been using lately on the Blessing 2 and the Dusk is these are actually final E-type true wireless tips. Um, they are maybe not that advised. I don't know if you can see. I feel like my focus is a little bit too, too deep here, but um, they may not be advised because you might see that there's not a lot of coverage over the nozzle here on the the blessing two and these are you know relatively i don't know it basically just brings the nozzle really close to your ear 
Um, they're nice and small and gummy and, and I like them for that, but maybe not the most protective and apparently that's been an issue for some Blessing 2s. It hasn't been an issue for me, uh, so maybe I shouldn't be too worried about it, but that's what I've been using. Um, honestly though, I got away with the stock tips on the Blessing 2 for a long time uh, and these are, the, I believe, the same stock tips. The only issue that I had with these tips is that because this nozzle is fairly wide, over time I found that this uh, this 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 bore here just kind of got stretched out and the tips stopped being really secure fitting on my blessing too, which is why I started digging, digging into finding uh, a different tip, an alternative tip. Um, and yeah, the, the final TWS ones are pretty good. I've also used the Sedna light shorts, um, almost always in the smallest size available. Doug T asking, how would I compare this to the Tin Hi-Fi T4? Well, I'd say the T, the Tin T4 is definitely smaller and rounder and it fits easier in the ear and um, it's definitely cheaper, but I haven't heard the variations yet. So that's about the extent of my comparison. Uh, Iron Boot asking, does the SSR, the Moondrop SSR, have a better sound stage than most Moondrop despite its budget friendly? Um, I guess it depends on what you're comparing it to. I, I find the, the SSR for me, soundstage is, is, is a tricky word to use. I'm not going to use that one necessarily, but I do find that the SSR gives me a better sense of space and definition and imaging than all of the other moon drop, like sub $200 moon drop IMs. In fact, I would say of all of moon drops, single dynamic driver IMs, the SSR I feel does that the best. Uh, that sense of space, I'm not gonna quite call it soundstage, but that sense of space and that definition and the imaging, I think the SSR does better than the Starfield, the KXXS, and even the Illumination. Not better than the Dusk or the, the Blessing 2 and the S8 though. Scott Pledger saying every tip I've tried on the Blessing 2 has wound up slipping off, sometimes even remaining in the ears, and that is not a fun thing to happen. Um, but that is kind of a risk with a nozzle like this, where you know there's no there's no obvious detent on here to hold the the ear tip in place. You're just kind of reliant on friction. You know, I would say the the one thing you can try and do is. Um, just make sure it's nice and clean with uh, rubbing alcohol both along the outside of the the, uh, the nozzle itself and as well clean the inside of the ear tip with rubbing alcohol. That can help a little bit, but eventually if it gets stretched out, there's not going to be much that will help out. So um, yeah, I think I think the uh, the Sedna ear tips that I've been using, they seem pretty secure and they don't seem like they're stretching out. So that might be a decent solution. Coyote asking, have I ever used Grado headphones? And the answer is yes. In fact, my first headphone that you could you could qualify as like a, an audiophile headphone was the Grado SR80, which is kind of a first headphone probably for a lot of people. I think I got that back in like 2011. And from 2011 until probably 2017, I didn't buy any other headphones because I thought I've got a good pair of headphones. What what kind of person needs more than one good pair of headphones? And then for some reason in 2017, I thought, you know what? I'm done with that logic. And now I've got well over 100 pairs of headphones. Um, but yeah, the SR, the SR80s I've, I've listened to pretty extensively. And I also have, and I did a review of the GW100, which is their, their wireless set. I know Grado has a bit of a reputation, but, and maybe honestly my time with the Grado, my extended time with the SR80 is partly responsible for my audio preferences, but you know, it's definitely a bass light headphone and I don't, I don't mind it too much. I mean, it's definitely less bass than I like, and you know that I'm not like a bass guy. Uh, so the Grados are less bass than my preference, but I'm okay with it. Like it, I don't hate it. Uh, I, I, I do still enjoy the SR80 from time to time. Vinyas saying, any good IMs in the $50 to $60 range? Um, Moondrop SSR, Blonde BL03, 
uh, and Tin Hi Fi T2 Plus. James saying looks like this, the variations is competing with the Thea Audio Oracle. And I think definitely in price range as well as um, in, in, in driver configuration because they're both tribrids, both around like a little over 500 bucks. Unfortunately, I have not heard the Thea Audio stuff, so I'm not going to be able to compare it, make that comparison. Um, I, will, I will be able to compare it to the Dunu EST-112, which I've spent quite a bit of time with, uh, but unfortunately not the Thea Audio stuff. Kenny Ma asking, what's the difference between the Blessing 2 and the Dusk? I suggest checking out my review. I did a review of the Dusk back in December. I mean, the, the gist of it is that the Dusk is retuned by Critical, a famed IEM reviewer, and he likes more bass than what the original Blessing 2 has, specifically sub-bass. So the, the Dusk has got more sub-bass and slightly less upper mid-range emphasis. Uh, Susie Bond asking, what's the best I am soundstage wise? Again, I don't, soundstage is a tricky word to use because I feel like so, some people have a very specific thing in mind when they describe soundstage and I'm not sure I even hear it. Um, but the, the I am, the I am's that I've heard that probably give me that, that sort of that biggest sense of space and that grandest, grandest image probably be something like the 64 audio trio and forte. Uh, you mentioned the Moondrop S8. The Moondrop S8 is very good and, and very precise and very well defined. Uh, and it does for me stage a little bit bigger than something like the Blessing 2. Um, yeah. Michael saying, I've said no more countless times, but also keep buying more again countless times. Yep, it's a problem, but in the grand scheme of things, there are much worse problems to have. Jeremy saying your Discord is dope. Had a great convo on buying advice and got a nice pair. Excellent. Great to hear. Good review of the Discord server, which, by the way, if you're chatting now and you're not in the Discord server, there is a link in the description down below. And in fact, a lot of the folks here chatting right now live are a part of the Discord server. So I'm glad that it's a great place for you, Jeremy, because... That's not just on me, right? I'm one person in that chat room. The rest of the folks that are in that Discord chat room are all pretty awesome. Uh, and, and I appreciate them all for, for hanging out and having good conversation and being helpful and buying advice and when people ask questions because, I don't know, that's, that's, what, the, that's what this is all about. But yeah, folks, it is now 10 o'clock in California. I should go to bed. If you're on the East Coast, you should have gone to bed already. Scott Pledger, you should be in bed by now. Actually, you told me you're in bed. But anyway, um, that's going to be the end of this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button. It really does help me out. Subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. You are. Uh, ding the YouTube bell so that YouTube lets you know next time I'm live. And I will be back with a review of the Moondrop Variations. Until then, I'll see you in Discord. Have a good week.